Greetings everybody, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12, you know the deal. Get your King James Bible, we're going to go to the book of Revelation. This is a continuation of the Stars series, and we're going to look at Revelation chapter 9. Um, so, let's do verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded. Now there's seven trumps, this is the fifth one. And I saw a star, a star, fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him, so this star is a him, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now I don't believe that this angel, with the that the likened unto a star that fell from heaven, I don't believe this one fell from heaven the same way that Satan fell from heaven. I, I think it's different. I don't think this one was kicked out. I think this one just perhaps came down or descended from heaven would be more along the more along those lines. That's what I'm thinking. And I'm not saying the Bible's mistranslated here. No, no, no. I mean, if you come down from heaven, you're falling from heaven, I guess. But I don't think it's the same meaning as when Satan fell from heaven. I think it's, I, that's just uh, uh, something I'm pointing out. I mean, I could be wrong, but because in verse 2 it says, And he, the star, opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. The bottomless pit. Now this could be a spiritual thing. This could be the portal to hell. Or I suppose, I don't know, I, well, for an earthly application, I was thinking along the lines of like a volcano. Um, there was a time at least once maybe twice or three times in history where volcanoes have erupted on the other side of the world and there was winter in the summer it's happened several times um, matter of fact let me look that up real quick in 1815 there was a Mount Tambora in the Dutch East Indies and it was called the year without a summer yeah but there was a another oh, let's see maybe that was a, hmm yeah there was a snow in June freezing temperatures in July I mean you know really bad I think there was a time period in the Middle Ages when uh, the same thing, something similar along those lines happened. I'm not sure. I mean, you know, I'm just pointing that out there. All right, so, and the star, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Sounds like similar language to Joel chapter 2, don't it? And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Hmm. The seal of God in their foreheads. You don't have a seal of God in your forehead? You're going to get an introduction to these locusts. Oh, yeah. 
Now, there's a, if you go to Ezekiel chapter 9, uh, it talks about a mark. Now, remember, in, I think it's Genesis 4, that uh, God puts a mark upon Cain. But in Ezekiel 9, the Lord puts a mark upon his people. And I think a mark and a seal, I'm not sure they're exactly they're 100% the same, but I think they're along the same lines. So let's read Ezekiel 9 real quick. Just verse first couple of verses. Verse 1. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying, destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark, set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that cry and sigh for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Now these are the these are the people that are sick of all the wickedness and sin in Jerusalem. That's why they're crying and they're sighing for all the abominations that are done. And the Lord told uh, this man, which I'm thinking is an angel, to put a mark on the foreheads of those that are appalled by all the wicked things going on. That's how I read this. Verse 5. And to the others he said, Mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Everybody else, strike him down. And uh, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eye spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. So God's marking his people and begin at my sanctuary then they began at the ancient men which were before the house and he said unto them defile the house and fill the courts with the slain go ye forth and they went forth and slew in the city yeah so all right let's go back to revelation 9 and verse 3 and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So seal and mark, I think, is along the same lines. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. So, you know, I, I read about these, these locust things, and I wonder, are these some kind of demonic creature that's released from the pits of hell? Or are they some kind of genetically modified experiment that the Lord allows? I don't know. I mean, we'll find out perhaps one day if we live through all this, you know. Can you imagine 
uh, these things strike you like a scorpion and it hurts, you know, for five months, how many times a day are they going to get stung? I don't, I don't know. Verse 6, And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die. They're going to want to die. Can you imagine that? Those These things must really hurt. And I can understand that. There was a, before the Lord called me back, um, there was a time I was really sick. And I mean really sick. And I felt bad. I mean, I had a headache for six weeks straight. I mean, I, I, I mean seriously, six, 24 hours a day, you know, like six weeks, weeks. I, I wanted to actually die. That's how bad I felt. I knew the pain would be gone. But um, somebody had other plans. Yeah, it took a lot to uh, it took a lot to get my attention, I guess you could say. So here it is. These people are going to want to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And I know the worldwide church of God's uh, describing this and they, they had a picture of a helicopter. I, I don't think these are helicopters, but yeah, whatever. And they had tails like unto scorpions and there were stings in their tails and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. And Abaddon and Apollyon, if memory serves me correctly, has reference to Destroyer. Let me look that up, make sure. All right, according to that, it means uh, Destroyer. And I was right. And you look at Abaddon, A, Bad, B A D. Dawn. And what's a Dawn in Mafia? A leader. So you got a bad Dawn. Abaddon. And then Apollyon is, you know, basically, yeah, it's along the same lines. So. All righty. Let's take a look. Okay, verse 12. One woe is past. Okay, so they've been going through five months of hell. But guess what? <laughs> There's two more coming. And behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Wow. Yeah, you thought the first one was bad. You got two more coming, buddy. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet. Now remember, the seventh trump is the end of the tribulation. Uh, 
Revelation is not in chronological order. It skips around. So, a lot of people say, oh, it's, it's, it's in chronological order. Well, I, I don't know where they get that from, but... All right, so. Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Now, in a previous study, one quarter of the earth died. I don't remember which one it was, but it was in Revelation. It might have been in Revelation 1, 2, and 3. Um, but now you got one quarter of the earth dying, but now you got a third of the earth dying. And I'm not exactly sure what the uh, population of the earth is. Maybe I need to look it up, but it's like seven, eight billion people. So you're talking about hundreds of millions dying. And, and, <laughs> the quarter of the earth dying was before this. So now you're going to have a third part of what was left. You know, a quarter, a third of the three quarters. We're getting down there. All right, they say 7.9 billion people and there were earth. I was close. 8 million. I mean, 8 billion. Yeah. And if you don't know it, and Congress doesn't know it either. But a billion is 1,000 millions. Yeah, not a not 100 million, 1,000 million. Yeah, that's, that's a whole lot of zeros. Yeah, and that's, you know, Congress just takes our money and spends it like, oh, I'm going to give, yeah, I'm going to give Ukraine a billion dollars, you know. That's that's awful generous of them. You know, if uh, if we had a ninety percent a ninety percent tax on everybody that was uh, worth a a million dollars plus to pay for all these programs, uh, those giveaways would stop immediately. But uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're pretty generous with other people's money. So, all right. So, Euphrates, the river Euphrates is going to be stopped. Verse 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand. 200,000, thousand. That is a 200 million man army 200 million man army and i heard the number of them uh there is only one country in the world that i'm aware of that could easily muster an army of that size and that's china China has, let me see here. China has 1.4 billion population, according to the world, whatever, population thing, thingy. So even if half of those were women, you got 700 million men get rid of everybody that's over 45 and everybody under 18 i still i think you could easily come up with an army of 200 million out of 700 million what do you say what do you say i say you can do it uh i've heard india could do it too but india's yeah i don't know All right, so, and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, and I heard the number of them. 
And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of the lion, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Can you imagine if John saw tanks and they were, you know, shooting their cannons, fire, smoke, and brimstone? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. By these three were the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. I don't know. You know, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, of course, this could be the um, more of those locust things. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Verse 18, 19. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads. And with them they do hurt. I don't know. Maybe this is not a tank. I don't know. 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not, yet repented not of the works of their hands. See, there's some people that are so hard-hearted hard they're never going to repent. They're not going to get on their hands and knees and say, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, when, when, when I came to the Lord after all those years of walking away from him as a kid, that was one thing I did, repent. And uh, praise the Lord for the Gideons. There was a King James Bible in the hotel room. Yeah. Yep, and I looked that thing, and boy, I'll tell you what, that was the that, that was the day that I realized what a fool I'd been walking away. But somebody had other plans. So, uh, let's see. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of their works. And there's people that will tell you, oh, well, we're supposed to repent of our unbelief. That's not what this says. This says they repented not of their works of their hands. Works, the things they do, that they should not worship devils. Yeah, that's a good idea, not to worship devils. That's a good idea. Uh, and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which can neither, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Hmm. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, witchcraft, nor of their fornication, physical fornication with women or spiritual fornication, or maybe both. Who knows? Nor of their thefts. God says they didn't repent of their murder, sorceries, fornication, or thefts. But if you listen to that famous preacher in uh, Tempe, Arizona, he'll tell you that, oh, repent means to Change your mind about unbelief to believing. You know, it doesn't mean turn from your sin. Really? So just, just believe, huh? You know, in James chapter 2, the Bible says that even the devils believe and tremble. Absolutely, the devils believe in God. And we should believe in God too, but... When the Lord says to repent, he wants us to repent and turn from our wicked ways. And if you have faith, you will. 
And if you don't have faith, well, hey, eat, drink, and be merry. If it feels good, do it. You know, so what can I tell you? All righty. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. That's the end of chapter 9, Revelation.